Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 239. Page 239 and today is our lesson number 124. This problem, problem number 2.8.5, 2.8.5 deals with the notion of parabola, which is what we discussed yesterday. And yesterday, and if you have not watched yesterday's video, it's important that you do so because this is the continuation of yesterday's video. And yesterday what we found is that the equation of this particular parabola turned out to be this one. We started out our story with we started out our story with a very simple straightforward parabola very, very stabilized parabola sitting at right at the origin there and the equation of this guy was y equals to x squared what we did next was we lifted it up, we picked it up and we shifted it we shifted it to the, to the right one unit uh, to the right one unit and we shifted it by one unit it's been shifted by one unit to the right and as a, as a result the new equation was y equals to x plus 1 whole square now we're shifting it to the right it should be y min x minus 1 because we have to take 1 away from it because of, because of the fact that we are the, because of the fact that everything has been shifted to the right by one unit all the values of x are going to be one more than before and therefore to compensate for that fact we have to take away one from each observed value of x otherwise we will not get the same shape between x and y otherwise we will not have the same relationship so that was the second stage next what we did is we picked up this new parabola and we pulled it down four units we pulled it down four units so it was sitting here somewhere it was sitting here we picked it up and we shifted it down one two three four units right here, the same thing, and we shifted it down, right here, and this, this parabola that you see here, this final one, this is the equation, this is the equation of that guy, y equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3, and that's the equation that they give you in the book there, what we want to do today One, two, three, four, and one. This is a, what is known as a line of symmetry, and it's been shifted down four units, so it's still sitting somewhere here. What we want to do today is to find out where does this cut x-axis, where does this graph, where does this parabola cut x-axis? Where does this parabola? cut x-axis but that's the same as asking that's the same exact thing as asking that's not how a mathematician would say it mathematicians do not go around saying where does it cut x-axis in the language of mathematics what this says is that what, it, what it's asking is that what are the x intercepts of this parabola which in return is the same as asking what are the values of x which in turn is same as asking what are the values of x when y equals 0 that's the question there are three different ways we can phrase this question but they are asking exactly the same thing they are, all three questions are asking exactly the same questions where does it cut x axis what are its x intercept because where it cuts the x-axis, wherever the graph cuts the x-axis is what is called x-intercept or intercepts, in this case we have two of them it cuts the x-axis here and it cuts the x-axis there which of course is same as, which, which of course is also same as asking 
what are the values of x? What are these values? What is this value of x and what is this value of x when y equals 0? Because at this value, y is 0. At this, at this point, y equals 0. At that point, y equals 0. And that is your y. y equals this thing. So we're going to set it equal to 0 and we're going to solve for x. That's what it is. Let's do that. We're going to set y equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3. We're going to set this equation equal to 0 and we're going to solve this equation. This equation that we see here is what is known as a quadratic equation. And there are two ways we can solve for this quadratic equation. One is to simply memorize the quadratic formula, plug in the values of all the coefficients. A, uh, A is 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Plug those values in the, in the quadratic formula and solve for the values of x. That's one way of doing it. Another way to solve for the, another way to solve this quadratic equation is what is known as factorization. We will use a method for factorization. And for those of you who are not familiar with this concept of factorization, or who are not very good, for those of you who are not very good at this factorization concept and would like to get extra practice, then here are some videos that you can watch. Revise GRE Math, day 99 to 103. Yes, that's right. That is correct. We have already covered this concept. So if you're watching, if you're watching this video on day 124, I do not know what you'll be sitting here watching 124 if you have not watched those videos because idea was to go in proper sequence. So if you have not watched those videos, day 99 through 103, those are five days. That five days that I spend there, 99, 100, 101, 102, and 103. I spend five days on the concept of factorization, and that's the concept that we're going to use here to solve this equation. So let's get going. Enough of the talk. Let's get going. Here's our equation. x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And here's how the factorization goes. Here, here's how we do the factorization method. We are looking for, we are looking for two numbers such that such that when we multiply them together their product equals negative 3. Negative 3 comes from here. Their product equals negative 3. We're looking for, I'm going to read it one more time. We're looking for two numbers. We're looking for two numbers such that when we multiply them together, their product equals negative 3. That's, that's right there. And that's, that's only the first condition. And When we add them, we get negative 2. And that comes from here. Now, if you can, if you can think of two such numbers, if you can think of two such numbers which satisfy both of these conditions, then you're home free. That, that the rest is downhill. Figuring out those two numbers is, is the key part here. So what I want you to do here even if you know your factorization, is to pause this video right away, right now, immediately. Give it some thought and come up with the two numbers. One more time, I want you to come up with two numbers such that when you multiply them, they better multiply out, their, their, their product better be negative 3. And at the same time, when you add those two numbers together, their sum has to be negative 2. Pause the video, I'm going to have a, enjoy my tea for a second, and unpause the video after you have your numbers. All right, here are the numbers. Here are the two numbers. The 
there are only two possibilities. If the product has to be negative three, if the product has to be negative three, there are only two possibilities. It's either it's either positive three and negative one, or negative three and a positive one. The product of positive three and negative one, the product of positive three and negative one is equal to negative three. We want the product to be negative three. And the product of negative three and a positive one also equals negative three. So it's either this or that. There's only two possibilities. Uh, the uh, numbers are either positive three and negative one. The numbers are, the numbers that we're looking for are either positive three and negative one or negative three and positive one. We just have to see which one is going to give us a sum of negative two. And if you want a sum of negative two, then obviously a negative sign has to go with the bigger number because negative three plus a one is going to give us a negative two. A positive three and a negative one, if you add them up, it gives you positive two. That does not work. We're looking for this. We're looking for these. Negative three and positive one. Negative three and positive one. So we're going to use that now. The numbers are... The numbers are... Negative three and a positive one. So that's what we're going to do here. So we have our x squared minus a negative 3x plus an x minus 3 equals 0. Now watch what happens. So those are, those are our factors. A negative 3x, a negative 3x times x gives us negative 3x squared. Negative 3 right here is negative 3x squared. Negative 3x squared and a negative 3x plus an x is going to give us the negative 2x, which is what this is. Let's continue. Now I want you to look at these two terms here, these two terms together, and see if you can find anything common. Do you find any common factors between x squared and a, and a negative x, a negative 3x? x squared and a negative 3x, I see x is, that is common in both factors. This is x squared, which is x times x, and this is negative 3 times x, x is common. Take it out common. If you take out x common, x squared divided by x gives us x. Negative 3x divided by x is going to give you negative 3. As we can clearly see here, x times x is going to give us our x squared, and x times negative 3 is going to give us our negative 3x. So we are done with those. Now look at these two terms. Do you find anything common between, do you find anything common between a positive 1x and a negative 3? A positive 1x and a negative 3. Do you find anything common at all? I'm going to give you two numbers, two different numbers, see if you can give me the common factor of those two numbers. Okay, are you ready? 3 and a 7. Yes, you heard it right. 3 and a 7. What is the, what is the common factor of 3 and a 7? The only common factor of 3 and a 7 is 1. Same thing is here. The common factor here is 1. So if you take out 1 common, here we are left with x. Not, not because we took out 1, because still is 1x. 1x times 1 is still 1x. And then minus 3. Now, we treat this as one, one part and we treat this as one part. What do you find common between these two parts here? This one is x times x minus 3. This is 1 times x minus 3. Let's, cross, let's erase this one here so that we don't get annoyed by it. In these two parts, what do you find common? If we find common, what you find common is x minus 3, right here. That's common. That's, both of these have that. So let's take it out now. x minus 3. And once we take out x minus 3, what are we left with in this first part? We're left with x. What are we left in the second part? We're left with plus 1. And all of this has to equal to 0. All of this has to equal to 0, right here. The whole has to equal to 0. Which tells us, which tells us, I'm going to erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this now. Which tells us that either x plus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus, sorry, x minus 3. Either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. That's the only way, that is the only way, 
the product of two quantities is going to equal zero. See, this is this is one quantity right here. X minus three. X minus three is this one quantity right here. This is one quantity. X plus one is another quantity. And we are told that when you multiply these two quantities together, their product is zero. The only way it is possible is that either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. And of course there is a third possibility which is they are both equal to 0. We, will, we won't contemplate that right now, which is the same thing here. So if, that were, if this were to be true, if this were to be true, it would imply, it would imply that x is equal to positive 3. And if that were to be true, that would imply that x is equal to negative 1. Voila! We found the places where this parabola cuts the x-axis. It cuts the x-axis when x is positive 3, it cuts the x-axis when x is negative 1. We're going to redraw it so you can see it right here. The line of symmetry is x equal to 1. And again, if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about right now when I say line of symmetry, that just means that you have not been watching the videos in their proper sequence. The line of symmetry is something that we learned on day number 122 on day number 122 we covered this concept of line of symmetry. The line of symmetry here is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, the vertex is negative 4, vertex means that's the lowest point of the graph, it's called vertex, right here, it's called vertex, and now we know that it cuts the graph at positive 3, this is 1, that's 2, that's 3, it's going to go through here, and a negative 1, it's going to go through here. So that's our graph, I'm going to do it in a red pen here. Voila! That is our parabola. That is what we were looking for all along. We were on hunt for this guy. We finally found it and it looks exactly like what you see there in the book there. And it talks about concept of vertex, it talks about the intercept, it talks about the equation of the thing. And now we understand everything where, the, where this bloody thing is coming from. Because before it looked to me like it just dropped from the sky. I had no idea what it was. Well now we understand it. Right? Very good. I will see you tomorrow on day number 125 where we're going to learn a lot about circles. Simply memorizing the formula of circles, a lot of people do that, they simply memorize what the, what the equation of a circle is. They just memorize it and they have no idea whatsoever the intuitive understanding behind it. They have no idea whatsoever where this formula came from. They just memorize it. I don't want you to memorize it, I want you to understand it. So we're going to spend some time on it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the day number 125, day 126, and day 127. I'm gonna spend three days on the concept of circles, starting from tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye now.